When my mother was a child, there was a common saying burned into her brain. Chinese, Japanese, dirty knees, look at these. Children chanted this phrase as they pulled the size of their faces up and down, mocking the appearance of her Korean features and bullying her for the history of Asian immigrants in America. This bullying affected my mother greatly. And to this day, she is embarrassed of her genetic features. Her internalized racism impacted me growing up. Hearing your mother talk poorly about her appearance makes you question your own. I practiced smiling in the mirror, keeping my eyes from getting too small. But while my mother had experienced outright racism for being Korean, my sisters and I, being half Asian and half white, experienced another form of othering, fetishization and exotification. Throughout our lives, people would often mention how special our mixed race faces were, like it was some display of genetic value. How lucky we were to be ethnically mixed. People were obsessed with asking what I was mixed with and were extremely interested in my response. I continuously got oohs and ahs as I revealed I was mixed race, as if it was some spectacle. These comments left me uncomfortable, although they were given with good intentions. I didn't think I was so exotic, so rare, so different. And why couldn't I just be the normal kind of pretty like all my other friends? What made me an exotic kind of beauty? Well, Webster Dictionary defines exotic as unusual and exciting for having characteristics of a distant foreign country. But having been born in America and being an American my entire life, why do my features suddenly make me an outsider? Being seen as exotic is a common experience for Asians in America. It's a product of a historical stereotype placed on East Asians through film depiction in the last century and has had many consequences. Referred to as the Asian mystique, fantasy and fears associated with Asians from stereotypes and media. Often East Asian cultures come with gongs and mystifying background music. East Asians are seen as fascinating foreigners and as foreigners were seen as other, as not American. Something to point out is that these early depictions of Asians in film were done by white people in yellow face. Examples of these are Captain Hepburn in The Dragon Seed and Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's. This adds to the idea that Asians and Asian culture are a fantasy. And when looking specifically at how the women were portrayed in these films, there are two main stereotypes, either submissive and docile or overtly sexual and in an exotifying way. Both stereotypes dehumanize women and show them as objects. And this affects the way that Asians are treated in America. I remember growing up, people would ask me, did your father catch yellow fever? To which I had no idea the meaning and then was troubled to learn it was a phrase describing a person's obsession of dating Asian women. NPR reported that Asian women are the most desired racial group in America. And it stems from the depiction of their alluring sexuality in film. And what can be confusing about these stereotypes is that on paper, this doesn't seem outright offensive. Some might even call being exotically beautiful a good stereotype. But a good stereotype doesn't exist. Any stereotype is reducing a vast and nuanced experience of billions of people down to one description that is believed to be true for all of them. A stereotype dictates how a group of people are perceived. And treating a culture and a group of billions of people as exotic means to see them as fantasy, as otherworldly, as not human. This is the definition of dehumanization. And it means that East Asians in America aren't seen to be equal to other Americans. And more than just being a foreigner, the stereotype is exotically beautiful, which means Asians are seen as a perpetual sexualized foreigner. And sexualizing another race for simply how they appear means to see them as an attractive object, not as a human being. Being fetishized and sexualized is horrifying enough, as is. But being mixed race adds another level suddenly I am the product of the privilege of white looks, along with the hints of exoticism and foreign beauty. Specifically being mixed race, ethnically ambiguous, is a huge interest to many people. I had lots of friends growing up who were insistent that they were going to marry a white man so that their children would be beautiful and mixed race. And even my own mother said, you should be glad. I always wanted to look more white like you. And there are even Instagram accounts that are dedicated to posting beautiful mixed babies. But this obsession is fetishizing children with an underlying level of colorism. You want your children to be white, but just ethnic enough to be ambiguously, uniquely white. And that's the issue with a lot of current trends. 
Being mixed race is such an obsession that people who aren't are trying to join it and profit on the attention. White people are now using tanning and surgeries and makeup to achieve this ethnically ambiguous look. A term to describe when people who aren't Asian attempt to be perceived as Asian is, East, is, excuse me, is East Asian baiting. It's a term that's formed within the past five years. And I believe it coincides with the increase of East Asian culture integrating into American culture. K-pop and anime are now common topics among American youth. And as we've seen this increase, there's also been a shift of American celebrities to want to profit off of the East Asian look. Celebrities notorious for blackfishing, like the Kardashians, have been recently removing their surgeries that created their BBLs to have a more slender appearance. Ariana Grande, another celebrity who was known for blackfishing, has now removed her tan, and most recently took photos emphasizing the paleness of her skin with eye makeup that alluded to a more monolid look, features that are associated with East Asians. The issue is that celebrities are normalizing, attempting to look like another race without saying it directly. And now many people who attempt to achieve similar looks to these celebrities may defend themselves saying they want that slanted eye look of Ariana Grande or the slender body of Kim Kardashian. When in reality, they are attempting to look ethnically ambiguous. And this is a form of cultural appropriation, stealing a genetic feature from a cultural group and profiting off of it as if it was their own. And it's not okay. But it's not just celebrities normalizing this, it's hidden everywhere in American culture. There was a recent makeup trend where the goal was to make your eyes appear more slanted. This was called the fox eye trend, putting eyeliner on both corners of the eyes to appear sharper. But what was mainly problematic was the hand motion associated with this trend. Photos taken time and time again of people pulling back the sides of their faces to exaggerate the slantedness of this emphasized eye shape. And yet, where have we seen this exact hand motion before? As a means to bully and condemn East Asians for their appearance. For children to tell my mom that her slanted eyes are ugly and embarrassing. But then 30 years later, have East Asian eyes become a trend, a makeup style for non-Asian people to look cool, beautiful, and unique. It's utterly hypocritical. And it's still putting white people at the top of this power dynamic because they are still the ones seen as the most attractive. I'm so passionate about this because I never asked to be sexualized or fetishized for being mixed race. I was always uncomfortable from the comments that I had gotten my entire life, and I still experience racism like many other Asians in America. In theatrical productions at my high school, they were excited to do shows that included an Asian character because I could fill the slot. And even though my eyes were praised for their exoticness, uh, they were still bullied for their smallness. And now, for my eyes and my looks to become a trend, but not for me. For white people to do and be called beautiful makes it clear that they can wear my traits better than I can. Not only can they be full white and achieve the classic old Hollywood beauty, but they can make themselves look like me when it's convenient for them to get compliments of uniqueness. Ariana Grande can dye her hair blonde for her Vogue cover and have a natural makeup look because that day she decided she wanted to look white. Whereas I have to live with being exotically unique for the rest of my life. And what bothers me more is that this topic feels underaddressed. This form of obsession and silent appropriation is wrong. And what confuses me is that outright and deliberate yellow face is currently seen as wrong. And yet to suddenly attempt to look ethnically ambiguous has not really been called out. But is it not the same thing? Both intentions are the same. And the problem is that it goes beyond just makeup. There are TikTok trends of people dressing as anime characters, putting on schoolgirl dresses to sexualize themselves and profit from the Asian mystique. And it's fine for them, because after they film these videos, they can wipe the makeup off and continue to exist within white privilege. But for Asian Americans, there is no escape from the objectification and fetishization that is being perpetuated by these videos. White people profiting off of Asian stereotypes make the consequences worse for actual East Asians in America. On top of that, East Asians also live in fear of violence and hate crime, especially after the COVID pandemic started. NBC News reported that violence against East Asians in 2021 increased by 339% in America. This hatred towards Asians was fueled by the false belief that East Asians are foreigners, 
And so the attempt to stop Asian hate felt less like Americans asking for equality, but East Asians against Americans. The perpetual foreigner belief in America limits the empathy and change Americans create towards East Asians because they are still seen as outsiders within their own country. The historical Asian mystique has fueled fetishization and sexualization of East Asian features. And as we look at current pop culture, there's a want to appropriate the Asian mystique, a new, subtle form of yellow face, East Asian baiting. And while non-Asians joining the trend get the compliments of a sharp eye look and a unique beauty, actual East Asians will never escape the exotification, the racism, the microaggressions, and the effects of these stereotypes that these trends profit off of every day. And what will happen once these features go out of style? Who is being harmed then? Not the people who use makeup to achieve a look and can now wipe it off and go on to the next trend. East Asian people will live with the consequences of a pop culture that mocked them, exotified them, and stole from them to whatever comes next, still on the losing side of American beauty standards. I'm tired of being a mystical foreigner. I'm not exotic, I'm an American. And let's stop fetishizing mixed race children. However obsessed you are with how beautiful you think they might look, they will still live a life full of racism and the questions of what are you and where are you from? Asian Americans are not a fantasy, they're real people. And we should stop praising celebrities for their cool new looks that are really stolen genetic features from East Asians. These trends aren't admitting to attempting to look ethnically ambiguous, but that is the true goal. So question the trends. Where do they come from? What is the intent behind them? And most importantly, who are they being taken from? Thank you.